At the ripe old age of 35, there's been a few games through my years that have kind of really blown me away. From my extreme youth, playing the likes of Dizzy the Egg on Treasure Island, uh, to Quake 2, Ghost Recon, Desert Siege and Island Thunder, and of course, Half-Life 2. Now while there's a ton I've not mentioned, one game that kind of really stands out, not just with me, but with a huge audience of people, was Portal. A game that took logic and puzzle solving to the next level. And now, thanks to Nvidia Remix and the Omniverse, it's been polished and taken to the next level again. And now includes ray tracing. But the big question is, how does it perform? Well, we're gonna find that out today. But before we get into that, here's a quick word from this video sponsor. Andy, what are you watching? It's, uh, it's, it's not what you think. Wow, it's so big. Why, well, thank you. It's the new AOC AG493 UCX. 49 inches of pure performance and a refresh rate of 120 hertz. It's so fast. You can even do two at a time. What? You can connect two devices at a time and split the screen. With FreeSync Premium Pro, a 32 to 9 aspect ratio and a built-in KVM, you'll be finished in no time. Gaming, I mean. What, what did you think I mean? Get your mind out the gutter and click the link in the description to find out more. So we all know what Portal is, or at least I'd hope you would, though our video editor deck has never actually played any of the Portal games. And while I don't ever condone hate speech, I'll allow it this once if you want to make your feelings heard in the comments section below, because who hasn't played Portal? And if you really want to stick it to him, head on over to our Discord and you can talk to him directly about all of the mistakes he's made in life. Now, while ray tracing isn't for everyone, we all know that Nvidia are all in when it comes to it. And with more titles supporting the technology than ever, it's been something that has been, I guess, getting progressively better since its inception. And thanks to the hardware side, also getting better, the performance drops aren't nowhere near as bad as they once were. Though the likes of DLSS more than helped to kind of make up for it. So Portal isn't a new game. In fact, it launched back in 2007. But as a new DLC with Nvidia Remix, which is built on the base of the Nvidia Omniverse, it's had the modded treatment and now includes full ray tracing support and new remade high resolution textures to give the very best visually stunning gaming experience. So with a new, or is that old game, now ready to harness the potential of ray tracing, we wanted to see exactly how it performs. So in typical fashion, we chucked a ton of GPUs onto our test bench to see how good or bad the game now performs. Now for our test bench, we're using our i9-12900K test system, which comprises an ASUS Maximus Z690 Hero motherboard, 32 gig of Patriot Viper 6200 MHz dual channel memory, and a two terabyte Seagate Fire CUDA 530 NVMe drive. All of our testing was done on Windows 11 21H2, with all NVIDIA cards tested using the 527.37 driver, and all AMD cards tested using the 22.11.2 Adrenaline driver. And of course, resizable bar was enabled for all cards. So with that out of the way, let's get into those glorious benchmarks. So starting things off by looking at the original intended game at 1080p, and as expected, all cards, even all the way down to the RTX 3050, perform amazingly, with frame rates well above 760, with the top tier 4090 coming in at just under 2000 FPS. At 1440p, we see equally impressive results with the low end RTX 3050 giving us the worst results, though at 580 FPS, it's nothing to grumble at. While the top end still sees stupidly strong performance at over 1400 FPS, though what is interesting is how similar the 1% lows are across the board. At 4K, the separation is actually really interesting as we now see the RTX 4090 dropping down the stack, which at lower resolutions, you could deem it down to bottlenecking, which I would argue at 1080p or 1440p, but at 4K, it's almost like the game can't harness the power of the Ada Lovelace based GPUs. So moving on to ray tracing results, and all cards tested see huge dips in performance, with the likes of the 6950 XT becoming completely unplayable, even at 1080p with a measly four frames per second. Realistically, at 1080p, I wouldn't want to play Portal below 20 FPS, which for the most part is the RTX 2080 Ti or below. The RTX 4090, however, manages to push way ahead of every card, seeing it sit around 57% faster than its little brother, the RTX 4080. As we move up to 1440p, we had a lot of cards that just didn't finish, due to the hammering that ray tracing had as an effect on them. Realistically, only giving a playable gameplay experience to the RTX 3090 and above, again with the 4090 in a league of its own at 56 FPS. 
Then as we move up to 4K, we end up with the likes of the high-end RTX 3080 base cards, giving us a did not finish. Though again, the only card that even felt remotely playable was the RTX 4090 at 25 FPS. The saving grace was always going to be DLSS, where we find the RTX 4090 regaining 139% extra performance over the game with no upscaling. Cards like the RTX 3060, which came in at 15 FPS before upscaling, again now see huge uplifts in performance, this time around 253%, now making it a playable gameplay experience and an equally impressive 270% uplift on the likes of the RTX 3050, which now comes in at 37 frames per second. 1440p now allows some cards that didn't finish in pure kind of ray tracing based tests to at least put up a fighting chance, like the RTX 3060, which found performance where there simply was none before. On the top end of the scale, again, the RTX 4090 increased its performance by 183% compared to pure ray tracing performance with no upscaling now giving us a whopping 159 FPS at 1440p. Then at 4K, it was a very similar story with most cards in the stack finding performance, albeit quite small on everything on the 20 series and some of the lower end 30 series cards as well. At 4K, you're going to struggle to enjoy anything below an RTX 3070, but both the 4080 and especially the RTX 4090 really shows what next level gaming is like in 2022, and it's impressive. What's more impressive is when we look at both the RTX 4080 and 4090, which incorporate Nvidia's latest DLSS 3 technology that we spoke about in our 40 series reviews. What we find here on the RTX 4080 is that between standard ray tracing performance and moving up to utilizing DLSS, we do see an uplift in performance of around 201% and then a further 42% extra performance when enabling DLSS 3, giving us a total of 330% extra performance between Portal RTX and Portal RTX with DLSS 3 enabled. It's a smaller gain on the RTX 4090 with 139% increase in performance when enabling DLSS and a further 41% with DLSS 3 giving us a total uplift of 238% between no DLSS and DLSS 3. As we move up to 1440p, the 4080 still manages a 216% boost when enabling DLSS and a further 42% when enabling DLSS 3 with frame generation, while the RTX 4090 had an increase of 183% with DLSS and a further 38% performance increase with DLSS 3. Then finally at 4K, the gains are equally impressive, with the RTX 4090 pushing forward by 81% with DLSS and a similar gain to what we saw in other resolutions of 45% when enabling DLSS 3, and a slightly higher 52% increase on the RTX 4080, which now gives us a very playable 84 FPS at 4K with maxed out settings. Okay, so let's get into the crux of it. Portal with RTX, I think it's safe to say, is the new crisis. With the likes of an RTX 4090 only getting 93 frames per second average at 1080p and a measly 25 frames per second at 4K, it's abundantly clear that DLSS is very much needed. Now, for perspective, a 3090 Ti, which was last generation's flagship, with 24 gig of VRAM only managed 10 frames per second at 4K. And while testing the 3080 Ti at 4K, I honestly felt like I was playing a turn-by-turn -turn game or watching a slideshow with a 5 FPS average. And that's where the likes of DLSS really comes into play. Sure, if you have a 40 series card, you could play Portal RTX without the need for any upscaling at 1080p, and there is an argument for 1440p. But beyond that, while it's still playable in areas, it isn't exactly the most fluid experience I've had within a game. And that really comes down to the extreme level of lighting and how it behaves and what surfaces and materials it interacts with, as you'd expect light to act differently with a metal surface opposed to water. Now, I don't wanna bore on about ray tracing and what it does and doesn't do because we're all more than aware of that. But I do wanna take a moment to appreciate how visually stunning Portal RTX looks when it comes to the way that light passes through the portals, along with volumetric lighting to assist in making the likes of fog and materials appear more lifelike overall. Now, what was the most interesting is that while AMD performance was, I guess, yeah, I can't, pretty dire, it was about kind of how things looked visually, where it almost felt like it had some severe level of compression, especially when looking at it compared to Nvidia. I mean, Nvidia themselves recommend an RTX 3060 at least to get playable performance from Portal RTX, and that's with DLSS. So straight away, we can see that Nvidia, who have an upper hand with ray tracing 
and have DLSS upscaling in this title was always going to fare better. With that in mind and having these amazing looking visuals clearly means performance has taken a hit and that's why some form of upscaling is needed. And while Intel have their own version and AMD have FSR, the game currently only supports DLSS. And with the 40 series cards, DLSS 3. Now enabling DLSS really did see quite a large uptake with the likes of the RTX 4090 seeing a huge 224% uplift in performance from having DLSS turned off. Though the older generation cards like the 3080 Ti, which did see a monumental 480% improvement when turning DLSS on, still only saw it coming in with an average FPS of 29 at 4K. And that's not me saying the card is bad, but really just a true testament to how graphically intensive Portal RTX really is. And that's why I made the claim that this really is the new yardstick, the new way of bringing a card to its knees. It is the new crisis but not all is lost. With the 40 series, of which right now we only have the 4080 and 4090, we did see further improvement thanks to DLSS 3, with the RTX 4090 seeing gains of over 45% compared to DLSS Super Resolution, or DLSS 2, and a whopping 372% uplift when comparing performance between no upscaling and the latest upscaling technology, meaning that you can now play Porto RTX with maximum settings, all while getting a cool 118 FPS. Now it's worth mentioning that we only featured a single AMD Radeon based card, being the RX 6950 XT, but it's clear to see why that's the case, where we saw the worst performance of all of the cards tested. So there was no point really even looking at lower end cards from the Radeon lineup. And unless FSR support is added to the game, there really is no saving grace for AMD in this title. And with Nvidia Remix giving the ability to mod these old school classics, I kind of feel there's a corner of the market that AMD just can't compete in. Obviously, we do have the 7900 series coming in the next week, which could change things completely, though I fear that it still won't be enough. And I have to chalk this up as a win for Nvidia, in that they have the ability to, I don't know, kind of breathe a new lease of life into these classic games that are known and loved by gamers the world over. What's also worth noting is that we ran all of our tests on the maximum settings to kind of give you a worst case scenario. So if a particular card doesn't perform as you'd expect, then you always have the ability to dial things back a bit in a trade-off for visuals, while, you know, getting extra performance. And maybe that's something we'll look at in future content in regards to performance scaling across various graphical presets. Because sometimes you do end up with diminishing returns where kind of, performance takes a large hit while not really improving graphics as much as you'd expect to see. Also add in that utilizing Nvidia Remix to enable this technology is open to the general public and the RTX DLC for Portal is actually freely available as long as you have the base game, which can be had for peanuts, then you're laughing. I mean, who doesn't love free stuff? For me, it's the start of something very, very special. And I personally can't wait for the same treatment to come to other games. Namely, there's one, Half-Life 2. So I'll leave that with you guys. What are you wanting to see next in terms of the next game that gets RTX treatment? And will you be trying out Portal RTX? And if so, what GPU will you be playing on? I'm gonna guess it's not gonna be AMD. For now, hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, a like and a sub to the channel would be amazing. And if you love what we do, then consider supporting us over on Patreon, where you'll get a ton of exclusive benefits, including behind the scenes content, access to our bi-weekly game night, and access to all of our testing data, not just for this, but for frankly, anything that we publish. And you can consume that in your own time. The link for that is down below. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you in the next one. See you later, guys. Bye-bye.